All right, so this will be a uh, hopefully whirlwind walkthrough of the Pegasus codebase. Um, and so the goal of this is not to really provide you with uh, all the details, but just to sort of do like a really high level overview of uh, what's in Pegasus and uh, how you can use it. Um, and so, uh, so this is a this is our wedding plan app that I've been using for the uh, for the demos, and um, this is just a, a completely out of the box Pegasus install. Um, the one thing I'll say is that it's got uh, sort of all the all the features enabled, so like multiple CSS frameworks and multiple uh, uh, you know Stripe. Stripe billing things and, and subscriptions and teams and all that. So, so your project might look a little bit different from this. Um, in particular, you probably will only have one templates folder uh, and maybe a few other uh, details, but, um, but hopefully it'll be uh, familiar. And so to start, we'll, we'll start with the Python code. Um, and so there's actually, uh, there's, there's only three Python directories that have been generated by this project. There's uh, the, they're marked with the, the little dots on these folders here, but there's there's an apps directory, a Pegasus directory, and a directory that will have your sort of like your project ID in it. Um, we can start here because this is kind of the the entry point, and and the um, and this is just like your standard Django sort of like project configuration directory, I would call it. Um, and so in here you'll have uh, you'll have your settings files, uh, including any sort of like dev or production or local settings files. Um, you'll also have your uh, root URL configuration file. So this is where uh, all of your project URLs are defined. In Pegasus, if you're using Teams, there'll be a team URL pattern section and then a regular URL pattern section. The team URLs get included uh, as um, slash a slash team ID. Uh, so you can kind of follow that pattern if, if you're using Teams. Um, and then the other things in here, you, you can mostly not think about too much. This is like a standard, this WSGI file is just a standard thing that uh, is used for, for production hosting. Um, and Celery is just a, your Celery configuration file if you're using Celery, um, but you don't need to worry too much about those. Um, the next and most important directory for Python will be the apps directory. And so this is where the different, uh, the different apps uh, are configured. These are, I guess, sort of like stored, standard Django apps. So if you're familiar with Django, uh, they'll hopefully look relatively familiar. Um, and so in Pegasus, there's, I, I guess, up to maybe like seven different types of apps that, that might be here. Um, so subscriptions will only appear if you've enabled Stripe subscriptions. And, and this is uh, just the code that, that deals with the subscription views and, and has help for functions for working with subscriptions and, and all of that. Um, support is a very, very small app that just has adds some views for uh, user impersonation. Uh, so this app is, yeah, it's, it's literally just a single, a single view and a single form. Um, and you won't see that if you haven't enabled user impersonation. Um, the Teams app is, is big. This is where all of the, all of the Teams code goes, uh, including, uh, including the, the models, uh, the uh, API serializers, some decorators and helpers and forms and, and all of that. So I'm, I'm not going to dig into this, uh, this whole thing, uh, but, but this is where all, all the Teams code lives. One, one, one notable here, I suppose, is that the uh, the views file has been split up. So if you're used to seeing like a views.py file in a Django app, like uh, this is this is a way that you can split up a view into multiple files. So um, instead of having a views.py, you have like a views module uh, or a package, I suppose it's called. Um, and then in here, you can import the views that you're using from all these different views files. And that, that just allows you to take, you know, a gigantic views file and split it out into different pieces of functionality. Um, and then the Teams example app is, uh, it's exactly that. It's, it's just a, it's a uh, sort of like a sample data model, uh, a class called the player uh, who would be part of a team with, with some stuff in it. Uh, and then um, and this is a good one to look at because this, uh, if you're using Teams, this might be how uh, a lot of your apps uh, would be structured. And, and again, this is, this is very sort of uh, standard Django. So there's, there's your models file, which is where you'll define your data models. Um, there's your URLs, which is where you'll define your, your URL routes. There's the views, which is the, 
code uh, that actually sort of like the Python logic that, that uh, renders the views. Um, there's this apps file, which is just kind of like the config that, that tells you can configure some Django app settings and things like that. There's any uh, Django forms and uh, your admin, which will uh, sh configure how your model shows up in the Django admin site. Um, and then a migrations folder. This, these migrations folders are managed by Django and they handle your, uh, your database migration. So usually you don't really have to touch anything in here unless you're doing, uh, unless you're doing data migrations and, and things like that. Um, the user apps, uh, I guess, hopefully self-explanatory, but it's where the, uh, where the custom user model is. Uh, so that's, um, that's the user class that will be used in your app. Uh, so you can add, you know, uh, fields here if you want to extend the user. Um, and then kind of a set of views and utilities for, for working with, with users. Um, the utils app is, is exactly that. It's just little utils that didn't fit into, into uh, any particular bucket. Uh, and then the web app is kind of handles the, I guess, the high level uh, web side of thing. It's got some, some utilities, like, like some contracts context processors to uh, put some extra context in, in all of your Django views, as well as, uh, I guess, some utilities for working with forms. Um, and it defines sort of like your, almost like your, your static site or your marketing site if you're using a, a marketing site. But so this is where uh, your, I don't know, the, the landing page and the, the, your terms, your 405 page, your 500 page, et cetera. Um, so, so yeah, not, not a whole lot there. Um, and then the last Python folder is the Pegasus folder. Uh, and this is, uh, this is basically where the Pegasus examples live. And so the intention for, behind this folder is to provide a reference for you to, um, to see how those examples work, uh, piece things together, but, but ultimately be deleted. Um, and so everything in this Pegasus folder is designed to like essentially be removable. Um, and so again, you'll, you'll see an employees app here, which is where the, the object demo example lives. This is the React and the Vue and the HTMX demo for working with uh, employees. Um, and then some of the, the examples app has, you know, kind of like a hodgepodge of, uh, of the other examples. The, um, what is it? The payment stuff, the, the celery integration, some of the graphing stuff. Um, so the idea with the with this uh, folder is that you would eventually uh, remove it, and that's that's why it starts with Pegasus, kind of to to note that it's like a Pegasus thing. So that's the that's the Python side. Um, the other two important pieces from a Django perspective, and and these are both also relatively st standard Django. Um, one is the templates directory, and one is the static files. Um, so for templates, this is where your HTML Django templates will live. Uh, and you can see again, these are, these are mostly sort of broken out by, um, by the different apps. Uh, so there's, you know, your subscription stuff, your team stuff, your team's example, um, your web stuff. And so these, these mostly will be sort of like one-to-one -one with your apps. Uh, and then, uh, there's also some stuff that, that overrides, uh, some things that ship with Django or some things that ship with all off. Um, but yeah, so that's the templates. Uh, you can, if you're not using multiple CSS, you'll, you won't see these other two folders. Um, if you are, the templates is kind of, uh, it's the Bulma version plus some of the shared stuff. Um, but anyway, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, on templates, uh, there's, there's two ways of doing it in, in Django. Typically you can, you can either do it this way with, with, uh, templates all centralized in a single folder, or you can put individual templates directories inside of each of your apps. Um, Pegasus centralizes them all mostly because that's what's recommended by two scoops of Django, which is, uh, which is a very good book, uh, about sort of like intermediate Django project stuff, structure stuff. Um, it doesn't matter too much, so so you can you can put templates inside your apps if you prefer it that way, uh, but that's not what Pegasus does. Um, and then finally is the static stuff, and and one important thing to know about the static files is uh, everything in this CSS directory as well as in this JavaScript directory. These are all uh, sort of like compiled files or, or derived files, and so um, 
So these are bundle files that are, or, or CSS files that are generated by the front end build pipeline. Uh, and in a production project, I, I don't actually, I get ignore these files and don't include them in the repo. Uh, and then I build them dynamically every time I, I uh, do, a, do a deployment to production. Um, but they are included in the Pegasus repository because uh, I didn't want to force you to create a front-end build pipeline just, just to get up and running. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of Python and Django developers are, uh, you know, even, even just like, like, like might not have Node on their, on their laptops. And, and so it should just be one more barrier to, to getting up and, and running quickly. Um, but this is where your static assets will live. So the, the CSS and uh, images and JavaScript that, that, that are used by your Django templates. Um, cool. And then finally, uh, the other main component will be the front end uh, and the, the actual source code files. And so this is where if you do need to make changes to your styles or if you do want to add functionality in JavaScript, this is where um, you would typically do that. Um, and so the styles lives in the styles directory, the JavaScript lives in the JavaScript directory. Um, and again, these are kind of organized in a, in a similar way to, to the other stuff. So the Pegasus, uh, the Pegasus folder here is, is largely powering the, the examples um, and, and can mostly be mostly be removed. Um, there's all, the Teams is, uh, you'll, you'll only see this if you've enabled a React version of Teams, um, but this is where the Teams React functionality is defined. Um, and then there's some utilities and, and sort of, you know, payment specific stuff. Um, and styles similarly, uh, yeah, so your, your app styles is where most of the, uh, most of the relevant stuff for styling your, your page will be. Um, and these will kind of map either to components in the cases, in the case of something like a nav bar, um, or they might map to, uh, individual pages, like in the, in the case of, of a profile. Um, and so if you needed to make, you know, if you wanted to add something to the, to the profile picture, like if you wanted to, to make it red or something like that, this is where you would make it. And then your front end build pipeline would, would convert that, uh, or build that into, uh, your updated sort of like site CSS file. Um, but that covering that whole bit is, is going to be out of scope for this, this particular screencast. Um, yeah, so that's the front end. Uh, and then going through these folders, uh, the requirements is just, uh, this is where your Python dependencies live. Um, your JavaScript dependencies will live in your package.json file, uh, which is, which is kind of the standard JavaScript thing. Um, scripts is empty. I, that should actually be deleted from, from this project. That's, that's only used for certain, uh, for certain deployments. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go through all the all these other files, but, but it's mostly, it's, it's environment config stuff. It's, it's Docker configuration stuff, some deployment stuff, uh, and some front end JavaScript stuff. So yeah, so that's the, uh, that's the quick version of uh, a walkthrough of the Pegasus code base. I hope this was useful and, uh, yeah, if you have any uh, questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or, or anything else you'd like me to cover in, in more depth that's useful uh, so I can keep creating uh, things that are useful. Thanks.